So as I've been going through and making these videos for Ciro, I've been keeping a list of all the tips and tricks I found along the way. That's what this video is about. I put together the top 10 tips and tricks that I found as I've been working on everything. You probably know about some of them, if not all of them, but in case you don't, that's what we're here for. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Serials open and you don't have an image loaded in your screen, instead of coming over to your open button, simply double click anywhere on the screen to bring up your open dialog. One of the first things we always do when we open up a freshly stacked image is take it out of linear and go into auto stretch so we can see what we're doing. Save yourself a few steps, you can come up into your settings, go to preferences, user interface, and change your default screen transfer function from linear to auto stretch. Click apply. Once you close and reopen Cyril, now every time we open up a fresh stack, it'll automatically auto stretch it for us. Cyril also has numerous keyboard shortcuts for a lot of its functions. To find out what they are, again, up to the menu and click on keyboard shortcuts. There's two pages here that will show you everything that you can do with your keyboard. Okay, before using this tip, this is a command line only function. You won't find it in the image processing menu. And because it's a command line only function, there is no undo. So before you use it, you wanna come up and hit your save button to save your current image. That way you can open it back up if you don't like the results. So this tip is to soften up your image, which is the case when you do a star recomposition. These stars sometimes look really, really sharp, giving them kind of a fake look. If you come down to the command line and type Gauss for Gaussian blur, and this is where you have to play with the number, we'll do a 0.5 on this one and hit enter and watch the stars. They went from sharp to a little bit of a blur. Because we saved, if we didn't like that, we would just come over and open and reopen the image. And now we're back to normal again. And we can start over and try a different value. This tip is more for you guys that are shooting SHO images. We end up with some magenta that you need to get rid of, but you can also use it if you're shooting an object that doesn't have a lot of magenta, like the Seven Sisters here. You can see I've got some magenta in my background that I want to get rid of. Quick and easy way of doing that is to come up to Image Processing, Negative Transformation, and then Image Processing, Remove Green Noise, click Apply, and then Close, and then Image Processing, Negative Transformation again, and it'll remove most, if not all, of that magenta for you. When you're removing samples from a background extraction, you can right-click on an individual sample to remove it, but if you leave your mouse on one spot and keep double-clicking, every time you double-click, it removes samples further and further out from that spot. This is another command line only tool that you won't find in the image processing menu. So just like we did with the Gaussian command, you wanna make sure you save your current image before issuing it so you can roll back if you don't like the results. It's a way for you to sharpen your image up a little bit. Just come down to the command line and type unsharp and you're gonna enter two values here. The first one is your sigma value. It can be as low as 0.1. You don't wanna go really high with it. Obviously it'll way over sharpen it. And the higher the number, Cyril will actually start to hang a little bit too. So keep the numbers low, play with them, start low and work your way up from there. So I'm gonna do a one for this image. And then the second one is the amount of that. Again, probably between 0.1 and one would be your best bet. I'm gonna take it up to one to get the full amount and hit enter. And it applies a unsharp mask to your image. To save yourself a few steps when you're checking your stars for aberration, usually we're zooming in and panning around, looking in the corners, looking in the centers. Instead of doing all this extra work, you can come up to your menu, image information, and aberration inspector. And when this window is showing you each of your four corners along the edge, and then also in the center. You can also access this by simply right clicking and hitting aberration inspector. In addition, if you come up to settings, preferences, analysis tools and under aberration inspector you can change your panel size and window size if your image contains the astrometric information about the object you're shooting and any of the other smaller objects that may be in the background that you weren't expecting you can come down and click on the show objects button if that astrometric data is not there it'll be grayed out as it is in mine because i have a jpeg open jpeg cannot store that information for us we're going to come up to our menu hit image information an image plate solver. We're gonna enter the catalog number of our object, click find, make sure our focal length and pixel size is correct, click okay. Once it's done, we're gonna click close and now our button is active. We click it and it'll mark and label everything that it sees within the image with its catalog number. The same process as the plate solver also occurs whenever you come in and you do a photometric color calibration. 
So during your process, when you do this, you'll notice that that button will become active for you as well. To save this, you wanna come up to the little camera button here, click down. You can either copy it to the clipboard or click on save as unique file. And it'll save a copy of it with the annotations into your working directory. And there it is right there. So if I just right click and open it up in photos, there it is with the annotation. If you had issues during your imaging session and your stars turned out egg shaped or stretched because of bad guiding or wind, if you have enough of those, as you're using the script, you'll see error messages for individual images where it could not perform the star matching. In this particular case, it did stack it for me, but it skipped a handful of my images. If you see something like this and you want to include them all, you can come down to your command line and type set find star space dash roundness equals 0 0.10 and you can adjust that number one way or another this usually catches everything if the stars are really bad space relax equals on and then hit enter once that's done go back and run your script again and once the stacking has completed scroll back up and check your registration area for any errors they should be cleared up now if they're not and then your stars are probably just too far gone there you have it 10 tips that i found as i've been working on Cyril. if you guys have any tips of your own that you'd like to share leave them in the comments and maybe we'll make a second video if i get enough of them put together thanks for everybody's time i'll see you in the next video and clear skies